My name is Richard Harvey. I'm an ENT surgeon or otolaryngologist by training, but I only look after disorders of the nose and sinus, and that makes me a rhinologist. I look after patients who have both inflammatory and infective conditions of the nose and sinus, but I also look after tumours and cancers in the area, and I also do nasal reconstruction and complex rhinoplasty work. Having this background makes me part surgeon and also part immunologist of the upper airway. I think for many people who feel they have sinusitis, we, we use the term very liberally in the community. People who have inflammation of their nasal passage, as well as inflammation of their sinuses, can present in very similar ways. So a rhinitis condition, or just an inflammation of the nasal passage, can give pressure, pain and blockage very similar to how sinus dysfunction can also give these symptoms. Patients who have unilateral or one-sided symptoms are likely to have a structural problem in their upper airway. Either there's a blockage of the nasal passage through some sort of structural abnormality, or there's some unique mechanical dysfunction occurring on just that side within the sinus system. However, bilateral symptoms, especially when they occur at the same time, synchronously together on both sides, is far more likely to be some form of allergy or inflammatory process occurring in the upper airway. Bilateral symptoms are symptoms that occur on both the left and right side of the sinuses at the same time and they flare often together. This is a feature of someone who has a diffuse process occurring in their upper airway and almost always is a marker of a patient with an allergic or an inflammatory process rather than a structural one. Smell loss is very important in the nose. People who have terrible allergy can have a lot of symptoms, but they often preserve their smell until the disease is very, very severe. However, true sinus disease often presents with smell loss early. And so the loss of smell in someone who's young should often be a flag that someone's developed significant sinus problems. While many people believe that pain around their face must be the sinuses, there are many factors that can contribute to pain in the face. For some patients, the pain is not even coming from their nose and sinuses, but as there are many conditions such as migraine, tension headache, and midfacial pain syndromes that can produce pain, tenderness, and soreness in the face. They typically are bilateral and they have a range of treatments that have nothing to do with sinus interventions. Nose and sinus disorders can produce pain, but, but it doesn't always imply sinusitis. Many patients will get a painful nose in response to environmental stimuli, whether that be smoke in the air, such as bushfire smoke, perfumes, cold air. There are environmental triggers that can produce pain in the nose as part of a rhinitis reaction. So even pain itself doesn't necessarily imply a sinus infection. Patients who see me who are likely to have an allergy as part of their underlying condition usually say that they've been in that state for many years or most of their life. It often started early on in childhood or teenage years. They often have associated other allergic conditions such as childhood onset asthma, eye reactivity, sometimes skin reactivity and rashes such as dermatitis. These are the features of someone who's likely to have an allergic problem rather than a mechanical problem. Patients who may be suffering from significant sinus conditions are those that are likely to have unilateral symptoms, blood coming from the nose, especially on one side, they're patients who've lost their smell early on in the course of their condition. They may have a bad smell in their nose. They may have a watery eye or changes to the sensation around their teeth or palate. And importantly too, patients who are already being treated for severe airway conditions such as asthma and on antibody therapies whose sinus disease is not getting better are often patients who have significant sinus dysfunction. Patients who are unlikely to have a sinus condition 
are those who have throat symptoms such as throat clearing, postnasal mucus, where the sense of that mucus and postnasal discharge is actually far worse than in any other nasal symptom. In those situations, someone is more likely to be suffering from an irritation of the throat coming from conditions such as reflux rather than a primary nose and sinus problem.